Hey, y'all, and thank y'all for tuning in. Now, if this is your first time, welcome. Now, if you've been here before, welcome back. Y'all, I am truly excited. That's because we are going over the Chicken Parmesan Lover's Ultimate Chicken Parmesan. And on this channel, y'all, the food is always the star. Now, let's get going. We're going to get these eggs cracked in this bowl, y'all. We're going to take our time, make sure that we do not get any eggshells in the bowl. Notice I'm using the egg to crack the egg. And it's just that simple. You don't have to hit it on the side of the bowl. Sometimes when you do that, the eggshells tend to fall in. Now, when it comes to seasoning up your chicken parmesan, I suggest you do it full throttle. The egg wash gets flavor to it. The chicken gets flavor to it. The breading gets flavor to it, y'all. All right? All phases. Now, if you don't want to, you can season up the protein and you can season up the batter. Or you can season up the batter and the egg wash and don't season your protein. It makes no difference. There are a variety of ways you can go about adding flavor agents to your food. Now, with this chicken parmesan, we looking at cost cutting methods, y'all. We're not looking at taking this chicken and pounding out that breast. No, we're going to butterfly it. That's what we're going to do, cost efficient. Because that one now makes two. Now, if I wanted to pound that out, I could. But now, when you sit it in this egg wash right here and you let it soak, it's going to add in the flavors. Now, look at this chicken, y'all. I didn't go full throttle today. I did not season or add flavor agents to the protein. I let the egg wash and I let the breading take care of all the flavor agents that I wanted to incorporate with inside of this dish. The reason that I did it that way is because when I am cooking for my clients, I also have to watch their sodium intake. I might have to watch this intake or that intake, depending upon what their dietary restrictions are. So I go about it in different methods, in different ways. Okay? So now we have breadcrumb. We have flour in there. The breadcrumb we're using is panko breadcrumb. You can use an Italian panko breadcrumb if you want, or just a standard breadcrumb mix, but I use panko breadcrumb because that breadcrumb with that flour together makes for the ultimate chicken parmesan. Y'all, it has the nice amount of crunch to it. It's not like fried chicken crunchy. No, 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 no. That's the beauty of using panko. You can distribute it how you want to distribute it. You can add more, you can add less. Now, when you have your standard breadcrumbs that you use on chicken parmesan, that tends to become soggy, especially if you have leftovers. They're not as appetizing. But when you use flour and panko mixed together, that next day, that chicken still will retain that crunch. It will not be soggy and fall apart like your standard chicken parmesan would do. Notice I have a handful of flour and or breading mix, right? And then I set the chicken down and then I put that what was in my hand on top. And notice I'm pressing down. Why am I pressing down? Because I do want to expand that chicken breast, y'all. Yeah, I want to make it a little bit flatter. I want to make it a little bit wider. I want the circumference to be all the way what it can be without making it too thin. So that is why I suggest butterflying instead of pounding out that chicken breast. Butterfly it, y'all. Because you can butterfly this if you're not feeding a lot of people. And two breasts will feed four people. Or two breasts will allow you to have dinner and lunch the next day. Or if it's just you, then you have multiple meals. Think on that. So that's what it's all about. And if you're doing a catering event, 
This is how you expand and you save money for your clients and they will be wild. They will be surprised and they will be appreciative knowing that you took the time to go the extra step and butterfly the chicken instead of just pounding out of breast, which you can do. And also when you do that, you still make a mess. So this is cost efficient and this is a mess saver all at the same time. All right. So we see what the breading process is. We want to make sure we get the flour on top. We want to make sure we get the flour on the bottom and we want to press. We don't want to press too firm, but we want to press firmly so we can expand the circumference of this chicken cutlet because now it's a cutlet because we butterflied it right y'all mm -hmm. so we're taking our time we want to make sure we're breading this up proper this is why i'm not fast forwarding the video i want to make sure that we're going through each step for what each step is now while you have your chicken going through the breading process go ahead and have your water at a rolling boil put some salt in there squeeze some lemon juice in there too y'all Put some oil or butter in there as well. I use butter over oil in my pasta water to keep my noodles from sticking. So I have some butter in this pasta water as well, too. And we want to bring this back up to a rolling boil. Notice how I take the spaghetti noodles and I half them. I break them in half. It's up to you. However you want to do it, you do it your way. All right. So I tend to break mine in half. And we want to bring that up to a rolling boil. We want to move it around to make sure the noodles aren't sticking to the bottom of the pot because the pasta will adhere to the bottom of the pot because of the heat level. It automatically will stick. All right. So we want to keep it moving, keep it moving, keep it moving. Now, we know we have our chicken off to the side and that chicken is breaded and is getting ready to be put into the fryer, right? So now we also have our oil working too as well. So the chicken has been breaded up. We have our pasta, we're working that and we want that to become a rolling boil and then we'll cover that up and we'll cut the heat on low. And then we'll have our oil already at the max temperature, meaning not the maximum heat temperature, but the maximum temperature to cook the chicken to perfection so we want our heating element to be around medium heat what are you using it depends i am using an electric burner so i have my electric burner working and it's on level five the oil in the skillet that i'm going to be using y'all is about 290 degrees closer to 300 degrees so when i'm dropping this chicken in it's about 300 degrees all right and it's at level five and i let that work now when i put the chicken in i know the temperature is going to dissipate especially rapidly on an electric burner as in comparison to a gas fire y'all stove so i'm gonna cut the heat up to about level 6.5 to 7 and i'm going to let it sit there while this first breast or first chicken cutlet of the parmesan we're frying up is working y'all okay so we're going to take our time we're going to cut that heat up to about 6.5 and that's going to ensure the temperature rises above 315 degrees all right we don't want to rise at 350 380 we, we're not trying to burn the chicken y'all okay we are actually par frying this chicken because we're going to finish it in the oven. Par fry means you partially fry it, both sides, and then you pull it out or you pull it off and finish it in the oven. In this case, we will be pulling it out of the oil and finishing it in the oven. All right, y'all? Why do I do it that way? One reason I do it that way is habit. Because I know if I have that chicken working, and I par fry it and I finish it in the oven, it allowed me to take care of multiple tasks when I was working in the restaurant. 
and the chicken will come out perfect. It will come out perfect. That's the beauty of it. And all that extra oil that you have when you fry that product, it drains out. And you'll see that on the bottom of that sheet tray. And that's the beauty of par frying. And it retains that crisp. That's what you want. That's what you need. So that is why I par fry. Partially habit. Doing it for many years in the restaurant. Second reason, health reasons. It's healthier to par fry it and finish it in the oven. Because you see all that residual oil. You can pat that chicken all you want. But if you finish it in the oven, you'll see all that extra oil just, just drop off. You'll see the difference. Give it a try. Let me know what you think par frying versus fully frying. Now, don't get it wrong. I do fry all the way through thoroughly, all the way through, y'all. But I also want to be able to show you different ways, y'all. Y'all my family, so we need to know different methods and different ways. Y'all know I have a fully disabled child. If you don't know, now you know. I have a fully disabled child. So also, par frying allows me to take care of other things, other tasks around the house too, y'all. It really does because I start it in the fryer, get both sides going, finish it in the oven. So if I need to do something with my son, I can get that done. If I have another task around the house that needs to be taken care of, I can do that and return back to the kitchen and pull that out of the oven when it reaches the proper temperature. In this case, we have chicken. We want that temperature to reach 165 degrees, y'all. So once that chicken reaches 165 degrees, we know it's at perfection. Well, what if the chicken goes over 165 degrees? It's done. You don't want your chicken to go beyond 178. I know that number sounds weird, but you really don't want to go beyond 178 because once your chicken gets up to 180, 185, it will dry out much faster. So chicken, you want it to be cooked at 180. 65. Believe it or not, pork, loin, pork products can be cooked at 145. But in the restaurant, we tend to cook pork to 165. Regardless, pork 165. You want your turkeys to be at 180, 185 degrees. That is what you want your turkey to be at this holiday season. 185 degrees. You don't want it at 165. You don't want it at 175. You want it around 180 degrees, y'all. Y'all saw me put butter and lemon juice, too, in that pasta. Not oil to keep it from sticking. That lemon juice, you know what it's going to do. It's going to add flavor. If you have fresh lemon, go ahead and squeeze some lemon juice in it. But take a look at this, y'all. So now we have our chicken. It's been par fried and finished in the oven. And you can see all the residual that's on the sheet tray, too, right there. So this is what we working with, y'all. This is going to be scrum diddly um y'all. Yes, it truly is. I had to say it because it's true, y'all. Now, look, we got a marinara sauce. You can use whatever your favorite marinara sauce is. In this case, I'm not making my own marinara sauce. I'm buying a commercial grade, nice quality marinara sauce. Will I say the name? Mm, I can, but it doesn't matter, y'all, because they're not paying us to say the name. We already paid to use the product, so no, it doesn't matter. You grab whatever brand you like, whatever brand your clients like, y'all, and get you some mozzarella cheese, y'all, get you some fresh mozz, whatever brand you choose to use. They ain't paying us to spit their name out after we already buy the product, so it really doesn't matter what brand y'all use. Use whatever you want, all right? Put it on there. I layer it with two on there because I want it to be fully covered, y'all. And this is going to go back into the oven, all right? We're going to let the cheese melt. The oven is still on. Now, I have the oven on about 375 convection, all right? So we slid it off. Now we slide it back on, y'all. Believe it or not, that's pulling it out of the oven. That's how quick we did it. The cheese took about maybe three minutes, four minutes to melt to this capacity. Some people want their cheese to be a little bit browned. I don't like that.
per se. I like my cheese to be white. I don't have anything on top because I didn't want anything on top. I would put some fresh basil, but I don't have a basil plant in my garden this year, y'all. So sad for me, right? Mm-hmm. Grandma's plate. Ain't nothing like grandma's plate, y'all. That's my wife's grandma plate, and we love it. And look at how the pasta just sits, y'all, when I drop it. This is why chefs sauce the bottom of the plate. This is why we sauce the bottom of the plate. Do you see how the noodles are staying there? And I'm able to tower the noodles, too. Look at how they stay. I'm pushing it around myself. You see that? And they stay. This is why we sauce the bottom of the plate in the restaurant. We add more sauce on top. You can add as much sauce as you want, you all, because the point is, is sauce is on the chicken, right? So we don't want to put too much sauce. Then you're going to be inundating and drowning in sauce. Now, take a look at that there, y'all. I mean, whoo that look good, now. And that's what it's all about, y'all. If you feel like there's something that we miss, something that you want to see, let us know so we can add it to the playlist, y'all. Mm -hmm. Now, y'all be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, y'all, because we're trying to be in your up next section in your browser, not wasting your time, giving you what you need, y'all. And we want to thank y'all again and again and again.